I'm Marissa Schaefer. And I'm Jenna Cantor, and welcome to Physiotherapy Performance Perspectives, a physical therapy podcast for performing artists. Today, we're interviewing Meredith Dake. Hi, Meredith. Hi. Meredith joins us on the phone from Colorado. She is a dancer and physical therapist who works with dancers all around Denver. She is a graduate of Regis's program in physical therapy and is the founder of Performing Arts Medicine of the Rockies in Colorado, which is a group of Denver-based arts medicine specialists who are committed to helping artists perform confidently. Meredith is here today to discuss a common injury seen in dance, lateral ankle sprains. Let's dive right in. Uh, So Meredith, we wanted to start off by asking you to tell our listeners what a lateral ankle sprain is. Thanks. I love helping people understand lateral ankle sprains because they are the most commonly sustained injury among athletes and performing artists. So chances are, if you're listening, you've had one. Technically, an ankle sprain is an umbrella term for several different injuries that can occur together or separately. So if you've overstretched or torn one or all three of the ligaments at the outside of your ankle, then you've had a lateral ankle sprain. That's very clear. Thank you, Meredith. Um, How does a person uh, generally sprain the lateral ankle in dance or theater? These will occur after you roll your foot inward in what a dancer would call the direction of the blade, such as if you accidentally step off of the curb or if you stepped on someone else's shoe and rolled off or if you just lay in a spinny from a jump and rolled over the outside of your foot. If there's enough force through the outside of your ankle, then you can stretch and tear the ligaments that hold your bones together. And that's problematic because your ankle will hurt, of course, but it will also be unstable because you've changed the ankle structure and you risk developing early osteoarthritis. When those ligaments can't hold your bones in place effectively like they should, then your bones can hit each other. And that's why when people with arthritis say, oh, I'm bone on bone, you know they're hurting. Cool. Or not so cool, but <laughs> um, not great. Uh, are there so sounds like you described like some accidents happening on stage? Are there like weaknesses that can predispose a dancer to dis- to sustain this injury? You know, I would say most of the time it's kind of an accident that could just happen anytime, anywhere. But having better ankle, knee, hip, core stability will help reduce your injury risk. You can strengthen your peroneals, which are the muscles on the outside of your shin that help you wing your foot. Um, And then I'd also say just be smart. Everything you know that's good for you, proper nutrition, hydration, rest, that will set you up for better success on stage and in rehearsal. Okay, so in a case where you think your lateral ankle sprain might be pretty severe, how do you know know when you need to go see the doctor for your ankle or when you can just take the care of the issue on your own? That's a great question because for performing artists, your instinct after an injury is probably just to think, you know, it's actually not that severe. I can just push through this. So and so did it and finish the show, and I can do the same. Um, which is a which is a great um, testament to your love for performing and your attitude. But what I don't want listeners is for you to forget that although you're wonderful, you are still human, and the human body needs time to physically heal and recover after injuries, especially lateral ankle sprain. So in fact, recovery can take a year or even longer if you end up doing too much too quickly. After your sprain, you'll find that your ankle falls up and you'll be sore and you might bruise, but be careful that you realize bruising doesn't correlate with the severity of the So that means you could have a really gnarly bruise and have only a minor sprain, or you could have no bruising at all and go on thinking that you're okay, but actually have quite a significant tear or sprain. So I would follow these rules of thumb. If your ankle is tender to touch or if you have to lift away from the scene, then you should definitely seek professional treatment. Depending on the laws in your state, so I'm in Colorado, for example, you could go see a doctor of physical therapy without a physician prescription. And in that case, the PT should be able to determine if you need an x-ray or an MRI to take a further look at what's going on in your chest or if you're safe to stick with a rehab program. And the goal will always be to just improve the mobility, get your strength back, and improve that proprioception so ultimately you can return to performing, dancing, back at 100%. Nice. Thanks. That was really clear. Um, I think it was. it's really important for 
um, our listeners to hear that it can take up to a year. Yep. Um, <laughs> I feel like people don't always realize that. Right. It's Patience. It's to hear, but it's true. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, so talking a little bit about recovery. So um, we've learned, Jen and I have learned that it's important um, to have good proprioception. Um, so we want you to talk a little bit about what proprioception is um, and during recovery, how can you improve proprioception? Sure. Proprioception is the ability for your brain to recognize where your joints are in space. So think about this. It's critical for dancers, any type of performing artist. It's how you move with agility and accuracy and seamless grace if you wanted to without having to look at your foot and have this pause in space and time where you have to look at your foot and tell it specifically where you want it to be. So once you sprained your ankle, your brain's perception of where your foot is becomes less precise. That means you have a much higher risk of spraining your ankle again if you don't retrain that proprioception. So here's how I would start. You would stand tall on a parallel foot, straight knees, thumb knee in tight, lifting up out of that hip. So you're engaging all those muscles and balance as long as you can without leaning or touching anything. And it's got to be pain-free. You can make this harder by closing your eyes and then make it even harder by folding up a yoga mat, even harder standing on a folded beach towel, and same principle, balance as long as you can, no leaning, no wobbles, tummy in tight, eyes shut. With your eyes closed, your brain has to rely solely on the input from your foot and your ankle and your muscles and your joints. But if it hurts to stand, then you definitely need to see a PT who can help you improve your proprioception in different ways. In fact, if you've ever sprained your ankle in the past, even if it doesn't hurt now and you've never been to PT, I would strongly encourage you to do that just for injury prevention. Yeah, that's great. Um, very helpful. Well, a similar note, we wanted to ask you about dynamic stabilization because we heard that's pretty important as well. And how would a dancer improve his or her own dynamic stabilization as well? Right. Dynamic stabilization is your body's ability to maintain control when you shift your weight. So think about when you're dancing and performing, you're always traveling, pivoting, turning, trying to fill the stage with your presence, right? Mm-hmm. Yes. After an ankle sprain, yeah, after an ankle sprain, you might find you have increased range of motion if you've torn your ligament. Or maybe your ankle gets stiff if it's been swollen and you haven't used it properly for a little while. So a physical therapist will be helpful in using hands-on techniques to help you regain control of your mobility. And they can show you, kind of coach you through safely increasing the amount of stability you're asking of your ankle. Because remember, you sprained your ankle initially because it was unable to remain stable during your fall, that trauma, whatever it happened originally. And again, if you do too much too quickly, unfortunately, you'll prolong that recovery. Absolutely. So on that note, too much too quickly, how do you know when it's safe to return to dancing? Oh, man, if I could just answer that through the crystal ball, I would for you. Um, <laughs> it's, it's bad, and it's, it gets frustrating when you're just waiting, and you know, like, every day you feel like you're getting behind, but that's not true. You're ultimately doing better for yourself by taking it slowly and following some professional advice. So um, here's what I'll do on my website and my Facebook page, Performing Arts Medicine of the Rockies, um, rockiesartsmed.com. I'll post a chart that has um, expectations for particular time zones after your injury. Um, Just remember, it can take six months for a mild to moderate sprain to heal. And of course, the goal is that you would be dancing in some capacity or with some modifications before six months, right? You want to stay in shape and stay strong. Um, But in the case of ankle sprains, it hurts. You definitely shouldn't be pushing through it. Um, And I would say absolutely get into the CFTC. That's my best advice for you. Great. We're going to have to check those out on your website. Yeah, that sounds great. (laughs) Thank you, you, Meredith. Um, We actually are now down to our last question. Would you mind telling us your favorite story about treating a performer? Oh, my goodness. I have the privilege of working with lots and lots of serious, professional ballet students. And, um, gosh, it's hard to take just one story, but probably my most meaningful one was actually one of my first dancers. She had actually um, incidentally sprained her ankle and um, had been chosen to stay year-round after a summer intensive program at Orlando Valley, so of course this is 
very important to her to be able to stay and perform and train um, and was in a lot of pain and anxiety. That is just all of us, right? You don't know what's going on. You don't know what the future will hold. You love something and it seems like you can't do it anymore. Yeah. And so I, yeah, it's <laughs> awful. I did one treatment with her with some hands-on therapy techniques and um, a technique called dry needling. Mm-hmm. If you haven't heard of it, look into it. It's really effective. And I tell people, it's a needle, so it hurts, but it's definitely not as painful as your last performance in your point shoot. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of hard to get to that level of pain. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. You can do it. Um, but it really was wonderful to see after the, the first time she came in, she couldn't even demi plie, not even halfway down, and um, took one treatment, and she came in a couple days later, and just tears of joy from her face, from her mom, made me want to cry. She was just Oh, it was night and day difference. Yeah, it was so fun. That's great. Oh, that sounds so rewarding. Yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for sharing that story and for sharing your knowledge on lateral ankle sprains. Yes, thank you. Um, You're welcome. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Um, and we also want to thank our listeners for joining us for another episode of Physiotherapy Performance Perspectives. Join us on the first Monday of every month for the next episode. To hear more of our episodes, click on the link in the description below to view our website. Like us on Facebook at facebook.com backslash PT Performance Perspectives to stay informed. And finally, if you want to get in touch, email us at ptperformanceperspectives at gmail.com. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Bye.